This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today, we are going to talk to a dear old friend that we met last week. He is Domingo Las Banas, a United States Army retired, and a, what can I say, just the dearest friend. Thank you. He has been Fighting the good fight, I guess, is the way you put that. He has done everything in the world for the veterans, uh, the Filipino veterans. The Filipino veterans, as most of you know, fought the World War II because that uh, MacArthur said, I will return. And so they worked hard to do that. And then they've been forgotten. The Americans have turned their back on them. And so Las Banos has spent these last years working hard to be sure that they are not forgotten. So again, welcome, aloha. Thank you so Thank much you, for Marcia. being here. So last week we talked about, tell us a little bit about these Filipino uh, soldiers that, like we said, are forgotten. Yes. Uh, I'm especially concerned about, uh, well, we're pleased that after 75 years, Congress has given the Filipino soldiers from the Philippines and America 3,000, uh, 360,000 veterans, this, this prestigious Medal of Honor. Uh, I'm particularly interested in 300 of local boys whose parents were in the plantation, working in a plantation in a sugar and pineapple. We were young teenagers when we joined the first group in the infantry. Uh, and so at the last uh, meeting when we got, when we were awarded the gold medal. That was in May. In May 6th. Mm -hmm. Only Five of us really got it, of the local boys. I'm concerned about the other 300 boys, because most of them are dead. So I'm really talking to the next of kin of these boys that were in the army with me. Uh, next of kin, uh, remember your grandfather or your uncles may, be, may have been, been with me, all they need to do is really go to the graveyard where they are buried in Hawaii. They have your 214, because the 214 is what you need to get information about where you served, when you served, and that would put you in line. And that, if you give this to this number, to Anita Akuhiro, and her number is 285-5143. You have to check that you're, you're next of kin. All of the uh, operators of the, of, of the burial grounds in Hawaii, they have uh, soldiers, they have your 214, and you need that 214 to fill out another blank, yes. which will give us, yeah. which yeah. will be sent to Washington, and they'll get, you, will, and, and they'll clear you for the pickup of your medal. So, what, for anybody that doesn't know, what you're saying about your 214, it's a DD, oh, discharge, DD yes. 214. It's so a it's discharge your discharge paper. papers. And it has everything on it. But for civilians that don't know, it says DD, DD. 214. Yeah. So, one more little bit of housekeeping. Uh, when um, we talked about the 17 uh, soldiers, the Filipino soldiers that were on submarines. Submarines, yes. Again, if any of those that were in your family that you 
have not identified. They are all, their pictures, their names are all on the, the museum, the Bowfin Submarine Museum. Thank and you. again, please call the submarine. We're going to list all these telephone numbers at the end of the program. Wonderful. But we do want you to please, we can't leave anybody unaccounted for. So please call, please go see them, uh, and, and you can handle all of this, but we, it's, all these telephone numbers will be at the end of the program. Wonderful, so, thank you. So, now, one more thing in terms of housekeeping. Uh, again, if you're not part of this, these are things you don't know. The federal government has the VA, Veterans Association, uh, Veterans, VA, and the state, state of Hawaii, has a separate organization, and it is called the Hawaii, State of Hawaii Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and that's Colonel Hahn. And so, again, all of these telephone numbers will be listed at the end of the program so that you can make sure any questions about any of this, please call any one of them and they can help you. They are willing to help you simply because we cannot let any veteran go unclaimed, unidentified, with full honors. So please, if, if, you, if you know anybody, please give them a call. Now, let's talk about you. <laughs> Last week we talked about all of your exploits in, in the military. And, but you, you, and we ended the program when you said at the bombing of Nagasaki that you made a commitment. So you want to tell us about that? Well, uh, at the time I made that commitment, I was, I was, I was in the midst of a battle in the jungle and in jungle warfare in the Philippines, it's so crowded only maybe ten of us could fight. The rest of just watch. Uh, so it was. Uh, uh, in any case, soon after they dropped the bomb on Nagasaki, the next day war was over. So in the midst of the jungle, they pulled me out, brought me to the sea coast. So God kept His promise. Uh, I said, God, get me out of this, get me out of harm's way and I'll become a teacher. So, right after that bombing, war's over for us. So I said, well, I better keep my commitment. So I quit the army. I went to the Philippines, saw my relatives, my last visit, caught the boat home. And I enrolled at, uh, I had already spent one year at the University of Hawaii. I went to Springfield College, Massachusetts. I spent my training of three years in physical education and health. Uh, Springfield College was noted for training YMCA secretaries. The logo of Springfield College is spirit, mind and body in a triangle, in balance. So that's where I get my guidance about a good life, a balance between your spirit, your mind, and your body. You need a healthy body, but you need training. That's why I went to college. So I had three wonderful, wonderful years at Springfield College. And I started. Where is Springfield? This is the day. Where, where is Springfield the, College? Springfield College, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. That's, That's where they have the Springfield rifles. Ah. Yeah. So I spent my time there, and coming from Hawaii, and New England is so cold, you know, I, I had to get used to that. But I spent three years there and had a wonderful training. By the way, Don Ho was a freshman when I was a senior. <laughs> And we used to sing together before he was, uh, you know, poo poo hino hino. Before his poo poo hino hino days, but he was. We used to sing in the elementary schools of Springfield, 
and uh, talking about Hawaii. So the fact that we came from Hawaii, we were, we were interesting people to the New Englanders. Mm -hmm. So I spent three years there, and then uh, I went, uh, then went home, and I taught my first teaching was fifth grade in Waipao, uh, no, Wai, uh, Waimea Elementary School. That was my first teaching. And after that, I taught high school, uh, coaching basketball, baseball, football. So that's where I started my teaching career. Then after a while, I became a principal. And I principal was a principal where? I was a principal. My first principal was of Anahola School up on the seacoast of Kauai. And I taught grades four, five, and six. I mean, five, six, seven, eight. Besides being a principal, that was my beginning. Then from there, I came to Honolulu and was principal of Linicona School, which is a mentally, school for the mentally retarded. I was there and then went to uh, went to a workshop in San Francisco, uh, art workshop. And there I met my wife. See, I, my face was her model to make paper mache masks. Because <laughs> she was a special ed teacher and I was a special ed principal. So that's how we got together. And then, strangely enough, when I was in Springfield College, there was a Mr. and Mrs. Miyake, uh, uh, Mr. Miyake's, uh, Jimmy's wife, Martha, was my classmate in kindergarten in Waiawa. <laughs> and so we met in college. Now, she and Jim were in Bangkok, Thailand, head of the uh, Fulbright uh, program, and they called a bunch of university professors, one in oceanography, one in sociology, and they wanted a sports guy. So Jim asked me, Jim, you, Domingo, you want to come? I said, heck yeah. So my wife uh, wanted to accompany me. I said, okay, get your degree. We'll rendezvous in Kyoto, and we'll go to Thailand. And that's what we did. We got married in Kyoto. So she and I are together. Went to, went to Thailand. And in Thailand, lo and behold, I was scheduled to be for two years the teacher in the royal palace for the for the children in the palace, and and there I, uh, uh, the king of Thailand now he was my fourth grade student, so that and then in the evening I would coach the Thailand basketball team, and so the first Southeast Asian Peninsula game in 1959, I coached the Thailand basketball team. We won the gold medal. And because we won the gold medal, they invited me to go to the Olympics in Italy, 1960 uh, Olympics. And there we played uh, England, we beat them by two points. We played Australia, we beat them by two points. And we had a game with uh, China, we beat them by two points. So we had a good time and we were part of the 60 Olympics. Oh, wonderful. So after that, we, I came home and I be, made me a principal of Waipahu Elementary School. And then from there, I went to, back to Kapa as a principal of Kapa High School. And then from there, I worked in the central office of the uh, Department of Education. And they made me a district superintendent of the Leeward Schools. So I ran the school for about 11 years. I built Campbell High School, Pearl City High School, we Nandakuli High School, so that was my bailiwick. Mm -hmm. So this is where I got in touch with many of the early Philippine educators and we went into a project to keep these young Filipinos well, getting a college education. And we need to take a break and we will be back in one minute, and then you tell us all about the Filipino boys. Okay. okay. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music.
Uh, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you too. Okay. We're back. I'm Marcia, and today we are talking to Domingo Los Banos, and he was telling us all about teaching, and you were just beginning to tell us about what you did with the Filipinos locally. Uh, we, made it a, we made it a point, and really, this really ties in with our battle cry. It plays a part. The battle cry, we had this battle cry during the occupation of the Philippines to keep focused on our mission. And uh, the battle cry of the 1st Regiment was lagging una in Philippines, which really means be the best, be number one. So we got to talk to our Filipino people and said, look, be proud you're a Filipino. Be proud. If you're in the Army, you're American Army, be the best. So that's lagging una. The battle cry of the second regiment was Sulong means follow it. Follow your leaders. Be the best. Know that you're going to survive, but develop a serving heart. Go to college, get your skill, share your heart with your others. And then finally, the special unit that were especially important to MacArthur. The first reconnaissance unit, their motto was Bahalana, which is go with God, knowing that God's love is inclusive, which means it means love your enemies also, that God's love is sacrificial, that God gave his only son to die on the cross that we might live, and God's love is transforming. He gives to you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will help you think through to deal with your problems. And that was Bahalana, go with God. Bahalana? Okay. Bahalana. Na. Na. That's the three. And those three mock cries we shared with Filipino students in college, and they've developed a, 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 a unit called Surreling Gawa, Do Your Own Thing, where we encourage our young Filipino boys and girls to stay in college, get a skill, and share that skill. And they've been getting together as a unit, the Surreling Gawa, for about 40 years, meeting every year at Camp Erdman urging the Filipino kids, prepare yourself, prepare yourself, get a serving heart. And that, I think, has been the mission that I think God gave me when he saved me. And so that has always been our push, encourage the young folks, go to college, get a skill, but open your heart to others. And that has served us when we were three years when MacArthur was missing from the Philippines, that kept us together. And uh, we felt that we made an impact because MacArthur, we helped him keep his promise to the people of the Philippines and America of I shall return. Now, when did you start this campaign to have all of the Filipinos recognized by the Americans had fallen down on their promise right. to bring them uh, reparations. Yes, yes. The Americans had dropped the ball. So when did you start this to? Well, we started that early on. See, early on, I knew How? that America had rescinded that uh, that the promise to these Filipino soldiers uh, 
they rescinded that. And for then, I and my associates created the, the, the movie Untold Triumph, which gives the exploits of our outfit. And I sent that to the chairman of the, uh, uh, of the committee in Washington. They did nothing about it. So it forced almost 8,000 Filipinos from the Philippines coming to Hawaii, living here for 75 years, and finally they come out with something, thanks to the goodness of Senator Inouye and Senator Akaka. They were always there trying to get something for the fellows. So these soldiers from the Philippines in the, uh, they've been in Hawaii for that many years waiting for some, some records. And I thank the Filipino uh, uh, clubs that helped these Filipino fellows, soldiers and their wives while they, for the 75 they spent in Hawaii, we were always helpful to them. So I'm pleased now that after 75 years, Congress has said, okay, this is, we say thank you to you. And I'm especially pleased that the, the uh, legislature, feeling uncomfortable o about taking 75 years to recognize these Filipino veterans from Philippines and, and, and America, they gave us uh, $200,000 for a war memorial, and I want that war memorial. Where will that be? In a year. No, where? Where I want a commission that will try to place that in the right place. Uh -huh. I hope that we can put them at Pearl Harbor because... It needs to be the, at Pearl Harbor. Yes, because the story when MacArthur was kicked out, it was our boys that keep, help him keep his promise of I shall return. Yes. So I think it would be it's part, properly but it is placed a, it, there. It should be there because that is part of the story That's right. of the war. Early on. Yes. Early on. And in it, uh, if, uh, it will show how early on we will make out this. I do think it is. So I'm thankful to the legislatures, to Senator uh, Hirono and uh, Gabbard and the rest and our state legislature for providing that funds. Hopefully we can get it by the end of the year. And I'm on that commission to, to give the message of that memorial. And if I could, what I have in mind is that it should be a message of peace on earth. That's what I want that message to say. So well, watch for that. Yeah, because it has to be that that it is a part of the American story. Correct. And, and when so I it met, needs to be there because more people go to the Arizona than any place else, and correct. And that they need to see this story. They need to know that yeah. this is a part of America. Also, yeah. that these young men are part of America. Also, I had the opportunity to thank. Senator, uh, President Obama for signing that proclamation for the granting of the award. And I then turned to the Japanese premier and I thanked him that Japan was the first country to ever stand up to the world and say no more war. So I hope that we can get a message through our memorial that says Stop all war. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you have any image in mind of what you would like? Them well, over? we saw, we, we already picked the, uh, the architect, and the architect showed us a soldier lifting up a fellow and helping him walk. Well, that has the spirit of the Bataan Death March. Yes. So we pick that. And then we see the, uh, at least 
five boys with flat nose, Filipino nose, with steel helmets, and I think we need a woman there because the women were gorillas also. So she can have a straw hat. That should emanate from that memorial. Mm -hmm. I also want to see a word like, uh, live aloha, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. But that would have the spirit of Hawaii and, uh, and peace. Mm -hmm. And I hope Hawaii can be brave enough to come out strong with that message. Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure mm -hmm. there are so many um, Filipino descendants. Yes, yeah, and we're growing. Yeah. Yes, we're growing. of those boys yes. that sacrificed so much in the legislature. Mm -hmm. and they're, in, they're in the legislature yes. now, too. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere in, yeah. in all parts of the government yeah. of Hawaii. Right. So that should not be a problem. Yeah. So you boys, uh, families of the Valentines, of the Santa Anas, of the Lapings, get next of kin, register, go to where your people, your loved one was buried. They have their discharge papers there. You can begin uh, signing up to get what is due to your family. You'd be so proud when you see that Medal of Honor. Thank you. Well, thank you. And it's been a pleasure spending this time with you, as always. Mm -hmm. And we, again, just appreciate your being, being here with us. And thank you for, for spending this time with us. And we'll see you next time. Aloha. Thank you. I think we got it. I think we got the next. Yes. OK. You see. All of these uh, burial grounds, they have the listings of the people's names. Mm -hmm. We put it in their hands already. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so thank much you. for the part you're playing in this. I'm so glad. Yes. And Kenneth said to tell you hello.